Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Coffee with the Critters. Um, we are live here at Indian Creek Zoo in Lambertville, Michigan. And as we announced last week, this is uh, where um, a new building is going up for us here at Indian Creek Zoo. And we're about to take you there. So I am joined here with Dr. Jason Crean. Thanks for coming again. Of course. Everybody that are regular viewers probably are familiar with uh, Dr. Crean. Uh, he just got in last night. And you're out here, he's gonna be out here with us till Wednesday, mm -hmm. right? We're gonna be in a lot of meetings. Every month. Yep, <laughs> out here every month. Um, Jason is helping put, well, you wanna say a lot, some of the things what you're incorporating here? Which I'm very we're planning. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> mostly, um, right now we're looking at education and conservation type programs. Um, that's really going to elevate the zoo to a different status, and then um, we'll be engaged in scientific research over the course of the next year. Um, probably some behavior studies and definitely some nutrition definitely some avian nutrition studies um, you know looking looking at what we um, what we know but want to get some data on. so well wow, it's and it's raining raining shortly with the Sun out um, welcome to Michigan yes <laughs> so um, and I'll be bringing to the table the science of uh, behavior through applied behavior analysis and B.F. Skinner's laws of behavior, how it applies to all species. It's not, um, it's, it's directed towards the individual, not the species. All right, so um, our building started on Monday and I wanna take you with us to show you, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the beginning of the building. Um, our plans and why it's important. Um, we have an office being built that is currently 10 feet by 18 feet, which just expanded. So Dr. <laughs> Crean here can have a desk in there right next to mine. He'll be here every month bringing um, the science um, in studies, uh, nutrition, genetics, biology to the zoo. So let's take you with us. You ready to go? Yes, before we get hit by a post office <laughs> truck. Okay, so <clears throat> Indian Creek Zoo is located in Lambertville, Michigan, and it is the home of um, around 370 animals, um, several different species. Uh, how this do? Um, many. It gives us the opportunity to have numerous species care for, learn from, share, education. So we are coming up on the building now. You are seeing the parking lot, which is still to be designed. And um, let me flip this camera around. Now, mind you, this building just started on Monday. Today, the plumbing starts, turn it around. Today, the plumbing starts, um, concrete's coming in on Tuesday. Um, the more it gets built, the smaller it looks until you get inside. So it is currently 40 feet deep by 80 feet wide. And this is just showing the building. What you're not seeing is what's going to go in around the building. So you are looking at, um, where we will pull up and park on a daily basis. <clears throat> but concrete is going to come out 10 to 12 feet around the whole building. And sitting on that 10 to 12 feet are going to be um, primarily aviaries, um, but you never know. Um, and they will be retractable, the movable walls so we can make each enclosure different sizes depending on the animal that we move into that enclosure so i think there's a door here but i'm not sure <laughs> let me bring you in here so those of you that are in the parrot project have seen the blueprints i have not shared the blueprints anywhere else but 
There's owner Joe Garbrick, um, who's making all this happen for us, and we appreciate that, Joe. But yeah, what you're seeing is this is 40 feet wide. So there's the zoo there. We will have an entrance from the Animal Behavior Center to the zoo here. We'll have an entrance here out to the parking lot. We'll have several door, well, I'll have a door on each side to make sure we can get to each outdoor enclosure ASAP if needed to. Um, the building is going to be covered in windows all the way around. There's going to be a divider wall here um, where with windows on it. So even standing in this room, you can look over there and see the animals that are outside over there, outside over there. So this room is, comes to here, right, Joe? Is this the... Okay, this is going to be the flight room, um, standing right where I'm at. This is all flight room. All right, ceilings will be 10 feet tall. And then we're gonna have a hallway here. So this is gonna be a doorway. You'll see these are all different rooms as well. This is gonna be a doorway. We walk in right here, which, will be where all the volunteers of the Animal Behavior Center will primarily be. All right, so windows all the way around, and here is going to be a restroom. And then up here is going to be, until that mark right there, is a closet for storage. And then here is going to be a 15-foot wide kitchen. Yes. <laughs> you want to say anything about it? I know Jason's all about state-of-the-art kitchens. <laughs> um, so how we have designed this is you come in here. Here is the sink. This will be our view, which overlooks um, raptors. There's the budgie aviary. Um over here, we'll, there are some primates, reindeers, but a lot of that's going to change next summer. So here, Jason, is our kitchen from there to there. And here's going to be a sink. Here's I know Jason's all about food prep, nutrition. Imagine that. Um, so we're going to have a sink here, stovetop here, um, dishwasher here. And then over here, this is all going to be cabinets above, below, and here is going to be our refrigerator. This is going to be an open kitchen, so when we turn around, it's wide open to all the birds in here. Um, that's on purpose. Uh, as you come out here, there's going to be an island with um, for more storage. Um, so we can work from the top of the island. And then out over here is going to be the hyacinth macaws. Um, yeah, different by design. We are building state of the art to show others. We've already had other zoos contact us for how we're designing this, um, how we're making it most functional. And I have yet to see something built like this with what's going to be on the inside and the outside so out here we're stepping back into the bird room the hyacinth macaws will be here we've picked which large cages are going where based on the um individual behavior of the animal our very social birds are going to go up here because they're going to overlook the parking lot um, don't forget, on the other side of these walls are going to be aviaries, so they'll be out in the aviaries. You will have Rico, Rocky, Coco, and Suki calling to all the people as they see them walk through, uh, pull into the zoo, and we're going to train behaviors for the birds to yell out to the visitors as they come up. There's So there's going to be cages, boom, 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 
Um, we've got, we've been in touch with Corners Limited. They said they definitely want to be out here and see what's going on, uh, especially when the cages get built. Um, so they're gonna be able to take our current cages and um, change the size of them if we need them changed. Uh, we've got two kookaburras, um, kooky and monster. We've got jelly bean, the curl crested arasari, Andy, the Major Mitchell's cockatoo that are gonna be going in here. So we're gonna redesign some of these cages. And in here in the middle is going to be another big um, island for, it's gonna stand about this tall and I believe it's six foot wide by three foot deep. That's on purpose because it's gonna hold all of our training equipment. And in here, we're gonna have play gyms hanging from the ceiling up above our heads. We like things above our heads to keep, to make it easy to clean the floor. Um, and then so we can just call a bird down to us, boom, put them on a scale, whatever they need to do. We're gonna be live streaming all of our work in here. For those of you that are in the projects, the memberships will live stream for, we're gonna be heavily intertwined with Inter Inter Indian Creek Zoo. Um, we'll be walking out the door, boom, live streaming from um, the zoo and here. We are pretty much just collaborating with and holding hands with Indian Creek Zoo and we are our main focuses are going to be on education, science, conservation. Um, we're going to have really unique uh, endangered, working with endangered, different endangered species um, and heavily bring, concentrate on education. Um, here at the Animal Behavior Center, we're all about the science of education. Once we step into the zoo, if we start working, well, when we start working with children, we're going to be bringing a different level of education to them um, and to their futures, futures of zookeepers. We are going to be a leader in the industry and... Yep, be a le leader in the industry, focusing on no child left inside. What's the program we were talking about? Nature Deficit Disorder. And getting the kids back out. And uh, uh, there's, there's some studies, and I think Jason probably knows about this and that, with kids on computers all the time. A lot of them are uh, seizures and a lot of things on. And uh, when you get out and play as a kid and you run, you create coordination. You fall down and it helps you be coordinated. And there's a great uh, book, isn't it, Jason? Uh, Nature, uh, Deficit Disorder, and uh, No Child Left Inside is to get them out of the classroom. And I, I think it's just a, And with a remote great... learning right now, we have to get kids outside. Yeah, like, we right. have to. And appreciating nature. It's, it's amazing to me working in education for as long as I have where you, you have kids who don't know what a cricket is. You know, it runs across the classroom floor and they're just freaking out about this cricket. Um, we have to we have to work to get kids um, outside and appreciating nature. And this is one way that we can do that through education. Yeah, and something like um, a lot of the work, the history of the Animal Behavior Center over the past eight years has focused on adult learning. Um, with me being out here at the zoo, um, I find a lot of interest. I drive around on those carts a lot throughout the day and what I do I love doing is walking up to the families and the kids and jumping off the cart and asking the kids they're obviously showing some kind of interest in the animal they're interacting with and that's one thing that's really unique to Indian Creek Zoo is you get that up close and personal um, interaction with these kids with the animals and boom that's what usually you can see the spark in their eye and that is the future of America in the world in our interaction with animals and having that tactile interaction to really help create that passion. If they don't make a connection with an animal they're not going to appreciate nature and want to preserve it. There's just no way. So this is um this place, out of all the zoos I work for, has the ability to do that more than ever. So, it's yeah, gonna, and I mean, just this building is a testament to that. And this is the first of many buildings. Um, so, a lot of construction happening. Yeah, here. yeah. 
You know, one of the things, Laura, when I was at the, uh, I don't know if it was at the AZA or ZA conference, one of them I was at when they had a workshop, and, and uh, they stood up and talked about, you look at businesses like boating industries going down, kids are playing sports, younger, grandma and grandpa's at the soccer fields, and one of the zoos that's growing, and it's kind of a crazy fact that uh, there's more people go to zoos than all professional sporting events combined. And when people hear that figure, they go, what? And if you look it up, the other crazy part of that same fact is there's 310 or 20 million people in the United States. Over 150 million people go to zoos. So it's a business that is growing from when I was a kid. There's actually, it's growing, and a lot of businesses are going the other way, like boating and different things. But um, you got to change with the times. And we have, a, we have a great opportunity here with the collaboration with all three of us to make this a special zoo. Um, and uh, like I say, make it where the kids care, they want to be here. And if you get kids at a young age and you educate them, you got them forever. Yes, and just like right, um, right before we started this live stream, I was sitting out front. Um, you can hear the macaws in the background. Uh, we, Jason was helping me move the macaws outside in their aviary, and a father walked up to me, started with a conversation. It was about the macaws. The macaws... The sight of the macaws are what started the conversation. And as I started talking to them, they said it was their first time here. And I asked, how did you hear about us? And they said it was an hour and a half drive for them, which is not uncommon to hear out here that people drive two and a half hours. We get people that come out five hours. But the conversation started with the father saying, I wanted to bring my daughter here because she thinks she wants to get involved in zoos and not sure where to start. She wants to be a veterinarian. So my focus started on the daughter. Um, why don't you want to be a veterinarian? Um, and she, I told her that's what I used to want to be when I was a kid. It's what I thought I used to want to be, but um, I'm doing exactly what I want to do now. I want that continuing ongoing relationship with that particular animal. That is why I'm a trainer. And she just, her smile was so big. And she said, she thinks that's what she wants to do. So I told her, pay attention to our Facebook page, um, the mailing list, because we're talking about uh, virtual education. Mm -hmm. um, kids, a lot of kids aren't going back to school this fall. So... Not physically, at least. Correct. <laughs> right. Um, so Jason and I and Patty and Joe have talked about how we can bring that education into the classroom and have it be science-based. And, and your story sounds like mine. Um, I can tell you what zoo I was at. I was in seventh grade. I was with my parents. I could tell you the, the exact spot we, we were at the zoo where they told me, you know, you could do this when you grow up, you know. And I just remember hearing that going, wow, I could, I could do something like this. Like this is attainable for somebody like me. Um, and that's fueled everything I've done, including the huge, massive amount of student loans I'm paying off. But the, <laughs> the uh, you know, the, the, all of that is because of one experience where I was told it was possible. And whenever a kid comes and feeds one of these animals and they make a connection with an animal here, that's just one more one more kid that's going to respect nature and and be able to um, you know really make a career out of it and want to do more you know to conserve what we have yeah so these connections these kids are making with the animals out here and not even just kids kicked me out of sixth grade because i wouldn't shave so i had to figure out something to do. So here's, to here's your biggest kid <laughs> Last movie I ever seen was We Bought a Zoo, and they won't let me go to movies no more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, how many different animals? I said 370. 370 and 77 or 78 different species. Okay. Um, so, that's a lot of ability to have hands-on experience, um, opportunities for education. Um, so, yeah. You know, whatever you do in life, you gotta you gotta do what you love, and that's yeah. And I, I've had multiple businesses, golf courses, subdivisions, and still do. And this is where I spend all my time. This is what I love, my passion. It's not a job for me. I get up at six in the morning, and uh, 
Seven days a week. Yep, seven <laughs> days a week. And uh, but I love what I do. So if it's, a, if it's fun, it's a passion. And uh, whatever you do, you know, I worked at the, I worked at the Jeep plant in Toledo, Ohio. And uh, you know, putting right front fenders on all day long, eight hours a day, is not fun. It's a good living, but it's not fun. Right. So if you're young and you can do what you want to do, you're blessed. Yeah. Um, I've always said, when you own your own business, every day is a Monday. When you love what you do, every day is a Friday. <laughs> You know, Absolutely. So true. and when I was a kid, well, not a kid, a big kid, when I was in high school, <laughs> right, yeah, last week, when I was in high school, I remember asking my mom, because my dad always told me, you have to go into math and science. Math and science is where you're going to make your money. And so as a young kid, I was just like, with my dad was like, this is make a good living, make a good living. And with my mom, so I went into biology. And then I looked into a future in college in biology and what I could do with a four-year degree because I knew I, wasn't, I didn't want to go to school for college for more than four years. The things I could do with a bachelor's in biology were various, but none of what I wanted to do. None. I could work in a distillery. I was just like, I don't want to do that. Um, so I asked my mom, am I smart enough to be a biologist? And she told me, and this was so true, and I think about this all the time, when you're passionate enough, you'll make what you want happen. And that's exactly what happened. And that's exactly what has brought me to sitting in a building being constructed with Joe Garverick, owner of Indian Creek Zoo, and Dr. Jason Crean. Yeah, so do what you love. If you're passionate about it, it doesn't matter what kind of money you make, you know? Because I'd live in a shed. Well, <laughs> be careful what you wish for. Yeah, I know. I'd live in a shed and just be happy just knowing I could walk out here every day and do what I love. You know, one of the things that uh, Lara talked about is hyacinths, and, uh, and I, I just love the hyacinths, the two we have, and, and, and you have goals, and... Uh, Goals and dreams make everything come true. And if you don't have a dream, you quit doing stuff. And my, my goal and my dream here is to be the largest, highest in breeder in the United States. And we're working on some pairs and some different things. And, uh, and, and we're going to make that happen and uh, give back, you know, doing it and stuff. So that, that's what we want to do with a lot of other different birds. But uh, this first building you go up, this will go. And there's three more going up pretty soon. So... Um, out back through here, we're clearing and doing. And we got a, we're very, very fortunate here with the trees and the rolling land and stuff that we have at Indian Creek Zoo. We sit on 41 acres and uh, uh, we haven't stopped building in four years. And, uh, and we're excited and we love what we do. So we hope that shows. That uh, definitely shows. And the, level, and the level of conservation with putting together a gene pool of hyacinths right now is. Like that's unbelievable. Like you have to, like that's so important. Um, and it's hard for zoos to do that because they don't have the space. Like hyacinths need a lot of space if they're gonna breed successfully. And um, you know, most zoos don't have the space for more than one pair or more than two pairs or, or whatever. Um, and now, you know, this who puts its money where its mouth is, right? We, we, we want to put together a breeding program that's going to be successful um, and really monitor genetic diversity so that you've got these um, unrelated birds who could be producing the next generation of hyacinth macaws in the country, so. Yeah, so um, that's one of several purposes of this building and what you're going to see being built behind here. Um, hey, Elizabeth, good to see you on here. Talk about conservation. Um, so anything else we want to talk about? Yeah, we've got a plumber getting ready to come out. Mm -hmm. So before I end, I want to show you where there's really not much else to show you, but um, Next to the kitchen there is going to be, these is going to be two rooms. This back room, we're kind of keeping it off the grid for now. But here is um, my office where we'll have a desk for myself, 
and Dr. Jason Crean whenever he comes to town, which is going to be often. Every month. Every month. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we've got um, a plumber getting ready to come in. So with that being said, um, I thank you guys for watching. Joe, thanks for making this happen for the Animal Behavior Center. Um, I look forward to our future together because it's going to be nothing short of amazing. Are you propose it? <laughs> you Let me ask Pat. We're, all, we're all friends here, so we joke, we have fun, and it, it, you know, I love the staff and everybody here, Laura and Jason, but we have a great time. So, And thank all you guys for watching, Laura, and uh, we appreciate it. Yep. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Laura. It's time for us to get to work. <laughs> all right, we'll see you soon.